Hello and welcome back to Bloodborne with myself, Hollow. Oh man, I'm excited to play more Bloodborne. Been playing it off camera, as I've said, uh, as of the most recent video where we had a little discussion about my ending of the game and uh, all our thoughts on it, really. Um, it's quite nice, you know, good, good, re interesting response, basically. It was cool. Anyway, anyway. Today's video, we are focusing all about that new weapon. So this build is a dex slash blood tinge build, and its aim is to use the katana uh, that you get from being part of the blood people. Oh yeah, I love blood people. I'm pretty sure it's something to do with them. But the idea is that we're going to go to Kanehurst, and we're going to desperately try and find um, the blood people and find the katana. And there's also a blood tinged based gun is apparently amazing as well so for the time being i've been using the rifle spear just to uh, you know hold me together tight keep me busy you know use it while i'm waiting to use the main uh, sort of actual weapons of the build uh so it's, it's been doing pretty good it's been fun to use it's got an interesting move set you know the power attack is very good because it charges so far. The fact that it's a blunderbuss attached to the end is very useful at times. Uh, though I obviously got a pistol, which is faster. Um, and I don't, I don't know. It just it's been a good build. It's been nice to have a completely different playstyle to the strength build, which is very nice. Also, check this out. Tons of people dying here in the fucking. How did that happen? Dying in uh, Hunter's Dream because we are online. That's right, we're online. So we might get attacked by PVPers. Uh, we might find some player notes. You know those kind of things. We see lots of ghosts running around. It's gonna be cool. So uh, I have the invitation to Kanehurst. It's time for us to accept that invitation and uh, take that carriage over there. And here we are at the central area of Hemwick, where the carriage is going to come take us to Gainhurst. So, I guess my plan today is just, you know, play some Bloodborne, have some fun, you know, the usual thing, and just talk about some random topics that might come up. Uh, I also want to talk about a bit of the lore of Gainhurst, or reiterate some of the things that we've learned, and I guess sort of, um, by doing so, hopefully, maybe, discover something new, something I missed, something I didn't consider before, and with the information I now know, maybe I'll be able to piece things together a little bit better. I don't know. It'll be kind of cool. Oh, boy. What's happening? Let's go. Get out of here. Oh, God, that was scary. Yeah, I kind of ran up to the cross, and there's like, a bunch of enemies coming for me. <laughs> I just sprinted over there. So, um, yeah, maybe you should just get in the carriage there, buddy. And get out of here. So creepy, this cinematic, though, isn't it? It's like someone's watching you. From the bushes, some someone plotting. And it takes you straight to the broken bridge over the lake. Which obviously makes sense because that's where you would go to to get to Kanehurst. But the thing is, there's no bridge there. I wonder what it's like for the character inside, you know? And what kind of magic it is that allows us to I don't know, float over uh over the lake. I just feel like it's very um, ghost-like and very vampire-like, this whole castle and this whole area, this whole section. And I love that they did this sort of side content. It really reminds me, this whole area really reminds me of Dark Souls 2, the Ivory Crown. That was the third section in the DLC that they released as the first sort of chunk of DLC. They also did the new DLC, what was it called? Scholar of the First Sin. Never did play that. Says a lot, doesn't it? Says a lot. I think I was really disappointed with um, most of the DLC, but I don't know, there was the Ivory Crown, man. It just brought it back for me. It brought it back for me. It seriously made that game so much better in my heart. And I would have absolutely fucking hated that game much more than I ended up doing. Just because of the Ivory Crown DLC. The level design. The plot. The final fight. It was all just so interesting. And I was talking to Gubiak about it today. Uh, sorry, yesterday. Uh, all about, you know, that section of the game. Um, and that DLC. And we were talking about the good parts of it and the bad parts about it. And something he mentioned to me that I didn't actually do... Um, was sort of an optional boss sort of fight area, right? That he thinks, he genuinely thinks, it was a good thing 
for the, the for the whole playthrough for the whole series that I did not go there, and that's why I like the Ivory Crown so much because I did not do that side um, sort of like stuff, you know, in the DLC. That's amazing, isn't it? To say that I had a better experience of a game because I ignored part of the game, like I I I didn't like. I didn't acknowledge a section of the game the devs put in the game. They put it in the game. They wanted you to play it. Because I didn't play it, I think the game's better, right? And I suppose that's kind of obvious. I'm sure there's tons of bad level design. It, it, hey, you know what? In Dark Souls 1, one of my favourite games of all time, the Bed of Chaos exists, man. The Bed of Chaos exists. That game, uh, sorry, that boss fight was just dreadful. Just, just dreadful. Excuse me. Oh god, you're disgusting. The way they die. So gross. The whole area is pretty gross. Just the outside bit. I don't mind the gargoyles so much. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the better chaos was just awful. That was in Dark Souls 1. It was uh, one of the four main sort of boss fights in the game. And it was... It was pretty dreadful. The reason it was bad was because it was kind of like... It wasn't... It wasn't skill based too much. You just basically how you would win the fight. I won't really tell you what the fight is or what happens, but how you win the fight is the sort of like two sides of the room, big room, and a boss in the middle, right? Overwhelmingly big, you don't really know how to attack it. So on your left, you've got um, a glowing orb in like some tree bit, uh, and then you, on your right, you've got another glowing orb. So you take out those orbs, and then you. Uh, then you fight the boss, and that's that's basically the main thing of it. And the floor will collapse all around you, plus while this boss is sweeping attacks the whole room, basically it becomes more mathematical than a boss fight. That's what it was. And essentially what you did is just get wrecked until you understood where the, the floor had fallen, and until you sort of knew where to go to avoid the attacks. It was essentially trial and error, so you couldn't really... I'm sure there's some people out there who've one-shot it and all that malarkey. But you couldn't really be successful in that fight without failing, you know, to be successful. And I'm sure, you know, there are people who are going to be like, Yeah, but it's a Souls game, you know, you're supposed to die, you're supposed to fail, and then you push on. I don't know, man, you saw my blind playthrough of Bloodborne, of Dark Souls 2. I gotta say, I, I didn't die that much, you know, overall, and I didn't really die to bosses much. I don't like the idea that there's sort of like, what's the right word? It's sort of man-made difficulty that's just like a puzzle. I mean, puzzles can be good, but <laughs> I don't know, in a fight, a puzzle doesn't seem like a good idea, to me, anyway. And I just thought that that boss fight was really bad. And in fact, the devs uh, announced that they rushed that fight. They regret it. They wish they hadn't put it in, although they've done it differently. So they do regret that um, boss fight, and they've they've acknowledged that. So that's interesting to think about. Um, so yeah, this this Ivory Crown DLC, the whole area looks similar to this. It's like a castle area, um, sort of frozen over. You know, I recommend you check it out. Um, maybe I'll put like a link in the description or something, where it's just basically my DLC playthrough, and you can skip it all if you want and just watch the Ivory Crown bit because that's the best part by far. And it is really cool. So here's a little description of the area I missed that Gubiak gave me. Um, all right. So, you go to this coffin area, right? You get in a coffin, naturally. What else are you going to do in front of a coffin? You're going to get inside of it. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, Bloodborne logic. Oh, these things actually disgust me. Actually fucking disgust me. So, yeah, anyway. Um, you get inside one of these coffins, and you fall off the side of this castle into the, like, wintry wilderness of just death. You know, that's not a place you want to be, essentially. That's what it was. And then you're in a coffin. And you're going down Indiana Jones style, avoiding the nuke um, in like a fridge. <laughs> down into the uh, the wilderness. Into the tundra, that's the word. The tundra of this place. What are you doing? These guys are really hard to deal with with the spear, honestly. Even though it's got good range, I just feel like... Oh! Oh! That was not a good place to stand. I couldn't dodge left, I couldn't dodge right, and I couldn't dodge backwards. The only place I could go was forward, and there was a giant monster mauling me there. 
Of all the places I could get stuck, this is quite a bad one. I can't, I can't believe that. I, I couldn't be more cornered in if I wanted to be. My god, that was just so awful. I'm not proud of my performance there, all right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, yeah, you get in this coffin, Indiana Jones style. You fly off the side. It's a great time for the whole family. And you go into this tundra. And in the tundra, the snows fall. And they fall. Whoa! <laughs> what timing that was. And they fall. And then they'll land on me. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, they fall. And they fall. And they fall. So much that you cannot actually see jack shit. You cannot see anything in front of you. There's just nothing. And that's it. That you, You're in this tundra and you just have to wander around. That's kind of cool, right? The coffin thing's a bit crazy, a bit silly, whatever. But the fact that... Um, where are you going? I just nearly killed you and then you're trying to run away? That's Honestly, that was a reasonable response now I think about it. They got like really emo hair. Look at that. Hang on. Look at their heads. Look at their heads. Just look at that head. Got that weird emo head thing going on. You can actually see that they look like the woman. Oh my god. God, I hate fighting these. I hate fighting these enemies. They look like the woman who is a ghost inside this place. You know, the, the royals. Yeah, literally, that's it. Just They look like the royals. Except attached to this weird, horrific body. And we've seen that somewhere else. We've seen that... Um, we've seen that with the spiders, with the patches and the like, right? They ha they're just human heads attached to the body of a monster, essentially. That's what they are. So, it's kind of interesting we're seeing that here again. I didn't even notice. It's these uh, royals attached to these bodies. And we know why. Or rather, we've made the, the theory as to why. Uh, if you don't know what my theory was, it was that they are drinking blood so much that they've malformed into these horrible monsters. And, uh, oh, God, I am just bad at fighting these guys. It's just hideously bad, my skill, when it comes to fighting these guys. Anyway, um, yeah, they've sort of attached themselves. And they've sort of become these weird mosquito things. And the reason they're doing this is to gain enough blood to be worthy of uh, the Great Ones to be their uh, surrogate mothers, I suppose. God, I hate you. Just die. Whoa, glad I moved away there. Very glad. Oh man, every time I get a charge attack that's gonna fucking kill it, it just interrupts me. This is poor gameplay right here. I'll, uh, I'll just lie and say it's the spear's fault. Not mine. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, you know, they want to be surrogate mothers and stuff. And it makes sense. They've malformed into these weird, horrible mosquito things. I guess that doesn't make too much sense. But in the context of the game, this is not that weird. <laughs> it's like normal of this game anyway. So yeah, we have these horrible beasts here. And we sort of just worked that out. That's nice. But you go into this wilderness in the DLC, the Ivory Crown. You just can't see shit in front of you in this horrible tundra. It's crazy. Please die. And you just fight a boss there, apparently. Something along those lines. It's just like, you see the whole area and a bunch of castles. And you sort of wander around to these multi to multi multiple castles and, and an area you can't see in front of you. And it becomes really irritating, you know, because it's just like you can't see shit in front of you. And it just gets really infuriating, apparently. I mean, the idea is kind of cool, but... It's, it's very important that they don't overdo it in that kind of situation so much that you cannot see like anything in front of you for the entire time you're playing and it just becomes a really annoying wonder game. Um, yeah, I can imagine that being really irritating. But, I don't know, the whole concept of not being able to see yourself and walking around this tundra kind of sounds cool to me. It's just, it must have been done poorly. And the boss fight is unfortunately rehashed content of uh, another boss fight you'd already seen in the Ivory Crown. It's just two of the same thing, basically, that you'd already fought, which is kind of neat, I guess. But also, you know, again, it's rehashing content, and they did a, quite a little bit of that in Dark Souls 2, to the point of me being very salty about it, especially in some of the DLC parts. So, again, if you want to check out the Ivory Crown, see what you think of it for yourself. If you've not seen it, if you've not played it, go check out my DLC playthrough of that, and uh, watch as I go through it blind, just like I did with Bloodborne. 
and see what you make of that DLC because it was honestly one of the best parts of the whole game um, if we ignore that little section that I didn't actually do. I thought visually it was amazing and it's funny we, we've gone in a big circle here but we finally got to the point that whole area was just like Kanehurst Castle you know it was, uh, it was similar layout, similar, similar features, similar sort of appearance I guess, the, the structures, the way it was built. Um, but there wasn't really ghosts necessarily, I guess. But you should check it out. The final boss fight in that area is the fucking bomb diggity. It looks amazing. So as soon as you pick up an item here, they all come for you. I'm not going to spend ages killing them all. You know, we've already seen it. We don't need to do that. So I'm going to be efficient as possible. So we got two items and a chest. We open the chest, we get the right flash. That could have been one that I used for the blood tinge and skill build, I suppose. Doesn't need to be, but it could have been. And we're just going to start robbing this place. Here we go. Alright, just real quick. Just don't mind me. I'm not here. I'm not here. Alright. Got some madman's knowledge. Not worth. Not worth. Excuse me. So I gotta go left, so I'll go right first. Real quick. So my understanding of how to get this katana is you join the vile bloods. And then once you've joined them, uh, you need to buy something from the messengers, according to Gubiak. It's uh you have to buy some sort of vile blood oath. Uh, and I guess that will allow you to buy Oh, that's it. Yeah, you get the oath, and then I'm sure the maybe the katana appears in the shop, and you just buy it, and that's it. That's probably how it works, I would assume. Got a lot of these ghosts coming for me. Good, good, gosh, Dan. Yeah, that's an ambush. I know it was. I remember. I worked that out the real time. God, look at me missing shots left and right. You're quite tough. Don't think it's worth my time. You don't really drop much. I guess you give me some souls, but. Not interested, do you know what I mean? Fuck you. Alright, give me this. Thanks. I just want to cross dress. Is that so wrong? People used to think it was wrong, but at least people are becoming more understanding that, you know, not everyone wants to dress how you want to dress, and, and that's fine. That's fine. The swirly thing with dresses looks fun, I gotta admit, but I don't know. I feel like I would be a little. I feel like. I feel like when I would wear a dress, if I was ever to wear a dress, I've ne by the way, I've, I've never worn a dress in my life. That's kind of fucked up, isn't it? I mean, it's not fucked up. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, the sentences I say. <laughs> it's not fucked up, it's just like... I just feel like it's a life experience. I should probably have at some point. You know what I mean? Hey, bro. You disgust me. You, I was going to say you discu you're disgusting and you disgust me, and I went for both. That was interesting. Get a lot of chunks off these guys. You want to farm chunks? These are the people that you should probably farm. Maybe not the best place, but it's easy to do so. Look at them. Look at them. Look at these stupid bat things. No chunks. All right. Fuck you then. Uh, there's one up there that I can hit. Another chunk. I'm trying to retrace my steps. It's funny, I've been going through the game and it's just, I've been absolutely, like, blasting through. Just, like a train. Just, just chugging and chugging all the way through this whole game uh, on this playthrough. It's been really fun compared to, you know, the playthrough where I was, uh, you know, blind. Obviously, I didn't know what was coming, where to go and stuff like that. Um, and taking it very slowly. But I know where, like, every ambush is. So I'm very excited to get this build set up and good to go. Look at him, that son of a bitch right there. Guy right here. Look at his face, he's so gross. He's so gross. Oh! oh. He's gonna kill me. You having a nice treat there, mate? You're disgusting, you're disgusting. They look like old men. Do you think these are like the malformed versions of uh, the servants? Because kind of, they kind of have like similar faces. A little bit, I think. Fucking hell. Don't fall off. You got chunks for me, baby. I want them. 
Here we go. Here's the chunk. Oh, God, it's falling off. Oh, it was just shards. Sorry. Damn it. We're good? All right, all right we're good. So we're going to face the first knight now. It's very tough, but yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to doing my first... Um, my first playthrough on New Game Plus because it's going to be really, really cool. You're alive? Impressive. Impressive. Should be an FPS drop here. It used to be. There was a lot more mist in this corridor and an FPS drop would happen. I guess they fixed it. Good job, Bloodborne. Yeah, looking forward to my first um, playthrough of New Game Plus because there's going to be new enemies. Enemies that weren't there before. Or rather, actually... I heard when I was watching someone else's playthrough recently, because I got to finally watch EMB's full playthrough, because I've done everything. Although I haven't watched the final episode, um, because I don't want to spoil the uh, the alternate endings. The quote-unquote true ending, etc. I don't actually know what happens. I did say that uh, people tried to spoil it for me in the last episode, and I, I haven't had it spoiled. Good news, guys. I legitimately haven't had it spoiled. I know that you... Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to say that. I know, like, one thing, but I don't know the ending. I don't know what I assume is going to be a twist or, you know, the truth, you know? I don't know all the facts, which is great. So I've not watched the ending of his playthrough. I've not watched the final episode, though I would really like to. Uh, got the executioner shit, sweet. Um, yeah, so he was saying in his playthrough that apparently um, the Chalice Dungeons kind of replaced New Game Plus a little bit, which is kind of really disappointing actually that the notion that the the new game plus isn't going to be that good or as good so i wonder if that's the case i wonder if there's it's going to be how it usually is where you have new enemies um new like random enemies that are going to attack you while you play that you weren't expecting before for example uh should i go spend 50k souls i'll go spend 50k souls so there'd be new uh, enemies that would attack you in this this new playthrough that you would do. And obviously the game would be harder in terms of uh, numbers. But the first sort of section, and probably the first playthrough, would probably be pretty easy. But you just, you're just you able to just keep replaying the game. And it like just keeps putting the difficulty up. More numbers, more damage, etc, etc. It just keeps getting crazier and crazier and more overwhelming as you go. Oh yeah, I forgot about the screams. This is where I'm actually going to have to start paying attention to the ghosts. Because they get pretty, pretty aggressive. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even kill that uh, servant there. So I'm wondering if that's not the case now. Then, uh, based on what EMB said, which was again, I'm gonna kill this guy because he's gonna stab me. Otherwise, oh boy, I was gonna get an easy kill. I was, and then you got interrupted by the dick over here. Nice guy. Come here, you piece of shit. It'd be alright if you, hadn't, you didn't have such an annoying weapon. That range, though. Someone's coming from my left. You got that weapon out fast. Were you scrubbing the floor with that sword? Oh my god, I'm being interrupted every two seconds. Not even that. Faster than that. Oh boy. I can't kill that guy because I'm being interrupted. I can't heal. What a jerk. The other end of the room. I'll go get him. Alright, cool. So I'm wondering if there's not going to be new enemies in the new game plus. Because that would be lame as hell. Lame as hell. There we go. Easy kill. That's all I wanted. See you, motherfucker. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this. Oh, it's not the hurt one. Alright, where's the next guy shooting me? Because they're everywhere. Holy shit. It's like I'm trying to have like a little dialogue here. You know, a little conversation. Making some points. Talk about New Game Plus. A thousand guys sort of poking small holes in me that are causing my guy to stagger for some reason. Ow. Come here. There we go. That's what I want. All right, now I don't. Now I don't get interrupted. I can kill them and hopefully finish my story about New Game Plus. So, yeah, 
in New Game Plus, you're going to usually get new enemies, right? I'm wondering if that's not the case in Bloodborne, based on what Ian B said. He said that um, Chalice Dungeons are apparently... The idea seems to be that they've replaced New Game Plus as much, like pretty much, with the Chalice Dungeons. And it didn't work too well, basically. You know, the Chalice Dungeons are kind of interesting. I'm sure they contain some lore, but I've not finished them. So my, my theory or my, my opinion on them isn't fully valid just yet, just so you know. But, uh, yeah, they, they, they kind of work. They're interesting, but they're a bit repetitive, honestly. It's just kind of like blasting through them and then sort of finding a cool boss fight, killing the boss, and then moving on. Um, rather than something interesting the whole way. Um, I guess the later ones probably get quite hard. I've not really done those yet. But I'd be really disappointed if um, New Game Plus isn't as cool or as good as it used to be. Come on. Look at the way he flaps. It's, so <laughs> it's hideous and hilarious. Do you think they can actually fly like that? Or it's just like a steady glide? Wow, that fucking kills my own ears, let alone my own character's health. Don't do that again. Never do that again. I just, um... I don't really want much. Oh boy. Again, that hurts me, man. Stop that. I don't want much from my uh, Bloodborne sort of new game plus experience. All I want is some cool new characters. Stop it. That's so awkward. You bat piece of shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't want much. I just want a little bit of new stuff. You know what I mean? Not much. Just, I don't know, some new characters, some new NPCs to attack. I don't need new story. That's not, it's not something that's in, it's not something that's in, um, God, they're loud. It's not something that's in New Game Plus. I just want some new characters. Like, for example, let me give you an example. That's what I should do. That's what I should 100% do. All I want is something similar to what happened in Dark Souls 2. When you hit New Game Plus, you would go in that starting area in the cave, and there'd just be, like, instantly, like, three guys that'll attack you. They're called Falconeers, and you get to see them in action. You've learned a bit of lore about these characters from their armor. Um, and it tells you, you know, they're like, you know, they work with falcons, they attack with falcons, they're like, um, almost like hunters, right? And they look so cool, and you get to see these characters for the first time ever, like, embodied and actually alive and working, walking around, that you otherwise wouldn't, uh, if you didn't play New Game Plus. So I'm wondering if there's anything of that nature, um, in Bloodborne, and I really hope that there is. That's the point I was getting at. It took me a while to uh, express it because there was a bunch of crazy ladies attacking me. So I apologize for that. Last time this guy fell through the wall. It was a very easy uh, fight, if you could even call it that. Alright. Light attacks. Go! There we go. Ken Coldblood. Oh, baby. If you're wondering where I'm at the uh, current story, I have gone to Bergenworth. I've fucked with everything there, but I haven't actually killed Rom. Um, because it's going to mean that baby's crying all the time. Let me tell you, that crying baby is kind of irritating. So I figured I'd just wait. Right, let's, um, let's get to the next lantern. I don't actually remember where it is. I have no idea, actually. Do you remember where the lantern is? It might just be a shortcut, like an elevator or something. Apparently I missed the gun that I was after, so I don't actually know where it is. The gun that I'm talking about, I don't remember the name of it, but it's like a pistol that has a really long barrel. And according to Gubiak, it looks very classy. You can't miss it once I, once I have it. But apparently what I did is I looked at the chest and got distracted by like a tangent and then completely forgot about the chest and left. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. And I have to run around this whole fucking place looking for this gun. But right now we haven't found it. I'm a bit concerned. Here, right, mate. You got some chunks for me. Some sweet, sweet chunks. Some chunk action. I see you trying to teleport out of here. Wandering madness. Yeah, two chunks. Worth. Now where is this chest? Right, that's the library sort of taken care of as far as I'm aware. Don't think we've got to the chest yet, and if we have, I'm sad. 
Hmm, maybe there isn't a land all the way to Lagarius. That would be crazy. Whoa. Did you have red eyes last time? Ah, he's empowered by the Banshees. That's really interesting. Oh, boy, it might kill me because he's empowered. Ow, that did a lot more damage. Yeah, because the Banshee's screaming, he's empowered. Wow! Can't move the glancing blow. Kind of cool that he's empowered because of the Banshees. Because he's, like, above the place where they were screaming. But he's very far up. That's all right. It took me just, like, a moment to get back. All right, you, sir, I'm going to take fucking serious now. I apologize for underestimating you when you were empowered because you are most powerful. I somehow missed that visceral. A little bit salty about it. Sorry, he's dead now. Just uh, got to pay a little bit more attention when I see them goddamn red glowing eyes. They scary, bro. You can have red eyes as well. Wouldn't make sense because you've not heard the banshee wail. Yeah, cool, they don't. Continuality or whatever word it is. I don't, I don't speak English. Okay. If you want to do a scream, if you can do a scream if you want. It makes it really easy to uh, visceral you. Like, how am I missing these viscerals? I love that they fall over when you stab them in the back. They're so useful. They look fucking hilarious when they do it as well. Probably have enough twin bloodstone gems or shards to instantly get to plus six now on the katana. I also will want to buff up the gun how, if I find it. Trying not to get too distracted. I am keeping my eyes sort of peeled for it, but I ain't found it yet, and we're all the way to Lagarius now, so maybe I have already missed it. That would be most unfortunate. I'll have to go back for it or something at some point. First, Lagarius. Lagarius. He does have a nice name, that. Do you think you would call a son? Do you think you would call a daughter? <laughs> you think you would call a, a child? Um, Legarius. In this day and age. Probably not, right? Probably not. But, still. Cool name. I like it. Yeah, mu I must have fit I must have completely missed the chest. I looked around. Can't see it. Alright, so, something that I didn't realize at the time against Legarius is when he has that huge sword sort of thing above his head that shoots tons of swords at you, you can disable it by hitting the one sort of activating sword um, that's under it. I didn't realize that, that at the time, and my method was just say, let's just fight at the other end of the room where there's no swords being shot at me. Uh, honestly, it worked, but um, I didn't really need to, to go through that. All I needed to do really was uh, hit this one sword, get rid of the effect, and then keep fighting. I'll try and do that now. Oh, Lagarius, you are creepy as shit. I just love the way that he wakes up. He's so slow and rigid. And you can see the blood start pumping in him all of a sudden. And he slowly gets more confident in the way he moves. He leans on his staff a lot less. Now he's walking fully upright. I love that. Something so simple. It's so awesome. I also just noticed that... The sound, the sound that he makes when he shoots these skulls is exactly the same as the transformed wheel. That weird red glow, the weird red sound. I never even thought about it. And it's, it's like death magic. It's like skull magic or some shit. That right there is not holy. Yet he is the leader of the holy church's executioners. I think this has nothing to do with being holy. You're a hypocrite, Legarius. You're all washed up. Oh man, that was unfortunate. One of those uh, falling skulls just completely interrupted me wrecking Legarius. It's going to happen again, watch. Yep completely interrupted me. It's like he planned it. It's like putting a trap down in uh, Mortal Kombat X. If that's the case, he's, he, I'm impressed, Legarius. Ow. Rude. Bro, why? But the fact that I already only have six heals left is just bad. Please just stop getting hit. If 
five heals. It's fucking five heals. It's four heals now. Might just be dead. No, 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 I'm okay. There we go. We got him to half. I have to take this quite seriously, actually. Oh, I'm dead. There we go. So that time he sort of hid in the corner. And I just couldn't really hit him without trading. Which is obviously just terrible for, against a guy who has way more health than me. and does more damage than me. So trading's a bad idea. Hmm. Okay. Just got to parry him a lot now. Got through the magic bit. As you can see, it only gives me a couple of heals. Nearly died there. Oh my god, he won't back off. It's really giving me a hard time. I was just like, no heals, wrecked him. Now I'm like, I'm struggling. There we go. So that's just how you do it. Pretty much in this situation where I'm not... I, don't, I wouldn't consider myself under-leveled or anything of that nature. I'm definitely just not as strong as I was when I first fought him. So I, I kind of got away with more, I guess. Oh my god, I don't want to be near that roof-like bit. Hey, right, if you want to fly over here, mate. You want to fly over... There you go. All right, thanks. No, oh, I needed to do that voice. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, basically, I, I guess I was just over-leveled. Or, well, maybe I was over-leveled, but I definitely had more levels. Um, so I was able to get away with more mistakes, it would seem. Um, and I don't think I'm under-leveled necessarily. Just, yeah, I just wasn't used to it being like this, I guess. Um, so I had to take it a little bit more seriously, and I definitely have failed, like, a few times now. Um, but I'm not going to make you sit through those. Could have parried that. There we go. That was quite easy, because there's slow swings. But yeah, I kind of just understood that the magic phase, you just got to stay on him and dodge. You know, you learn how his shit works, basically. And then you dodge at the right time. Ow. Speaking of dodging at the right time, don't do that. Don't do what I just did. Oh, boy. You can't parry that, lad. You can't parry that, lad. I'm running out of ammo now. That's not good. You want to stop doing that move? You jerk. Oh, my God. Come on. Stab at me. Stab at thee. Have at thee. You might keep doing that move. See what happens. And there we have it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. That took a lot longer than I needed it to. I, I will admit, you know, again, I, I failed a little bit on that one. And then I was like, all right. Fucking hell. I really, <laughs> I really, really, really need to take this seriously or we're never going to get anywhere. Um, first time I've ever lost Echoes, that. Uh, I had to run back to him a few times. First time I've ever lost Echoes in this playthrough, anyway. In the blind playthrough, I'm sure I've lost some. I just don't remember what. But either way, now we get to go see the Queen. And we join her Covenant. And as I said, I think, um, when you're in the Covenant, the weapon appears in the shop. I wonder how much it costs. You know, I actually don't know how much it costs so i have 25k souls here i've got a bunch of souls i can get from the um echo things what are they called they call the deuce yeah the cold blood deuce and uh, yeah i'll probably have enough there hopefully we will see also there's the pistol i need to go find somewhere in the castle i'm gonna probably look that up because apparently i've missed it again as you can see unless it's like a chest inside this hidden illusion room thing i love the reveal of this check it out Sudden storm, just like we were talking about with the DLC and Ivory Crown, just like that. You can't see in front of you. You can't see in front of yourself. But it was like that was like like that permanently. Apparently, I love that. So cool. All right, let's not be rude this time. We'll go bow in front of her. Actually, like the hallway as well. It's it's like a uh, knight chess pieces or something. Check them out. The the golden. I love it. I love it. It's so nice. This whole hallway. Best hallway. Someone make it in Minecraft. Send it to Mapstrav. <laughs> that would be cool. Make Legarius's roof in Maps for Mapstrav. You know, and and this illusion room as well with the queen in it, and Legarius on the roof or something. Be sweet. Or get 
I really feel like they're um, a, a, a people, a group, the people who are the Canehurst Royals or whatever, that were just very egotistical. It's funny how, um, you know, royals and stuff in medieval times and whatnot have like tons and tons of paintings of themselves. <laughs> ha! Despicable seduction, but wondrous statue. I'll be honest with you, this doesn't seduce me, but it is a wondrous statue, I agree. So we got the summons that we can give to Alfred if we want him to come beat her to death. <laughs> We say death. Doesn't die. How's it going? This is all the uh, stuff we've already seen. So I'm gonna I'm probably gonna skip through it. Swan enemy church. And stuck stuck with the mask. Just wanna swear my oath to you. Thanks. So gross, the way that she's like, yes, my blood's super rotten and you'll get very sick. Drink deep of my blood. Feel the spreading corruption burn. Like, that's disgusting. <laughs> You're so gross. Now, thou art too a vile blood. Thanks. Too, the very last on this earth. What about all the other ones running around, you know, the online ones? So you get the Canehurst badge and that allows you to buy the actual uh, ship. Apparently. Somehow I missed that. Don't have any blood dregs. Alright. Thank you so much. So I'm going to quickly go find that pistol. And then we're going to go get our hands on that sword. Oh yeah, this is what this whole episode has been about. I've actually come back to the Hunter's Dream now instead. Um, I figured it makes more sense that we get the weapon. And then we use the weapon for the rest of the episode. So you can see the moveset and how it works. You get a very nice, nice look at my character. Look! Look, it's me! It's me, or rather, what I thought I could just quickly whip up very quickly um, with my stupid scruff beard that I got. I've actually shaved, thank God, but it's going to be that soon. Apart from the moustache, I don't get a sweet moustache like that. Um, but yeah, the blue hair. I want blue hair again. I'm going to get, like, probably, I think I might go full blue again, you know, instead of just the sides. Uh, sorry, instead of just the top and not the sides, I might go full blue again. Anyway, that's irrelevant. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to get the, the weapon now. Where is it? I'm excited about this. The Chica... 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 It's 50k. It's 50... That's quite a lot. Can I get that? Hmm... Check out the stats, by the way. Um, the requirements are, uh... As follows. The, uh... 14 on skill and 12 on blood tinge. I have both of those. And 10 strength. Uh, it is very good. Very good weapon. I really want to use it. Foreign-made weapon wielded by the Royal Guards who protected Annalise, Queen of the Vilebloods at Canehurst Castle. Uh, when... Oh, so these guards, the, the, the knights that we saw, um, on those, uh, those horses, but those were just statues. It, the, the, none of them are left. When the intricate rippled engraving that spans the Chicago's blade is imbrued with blood, the sword sings in scarlet hues. However, the right eats away at the wielder's very existence. It's basically more damage, but it costs you health. It's really cool. So, I really want to get that. Are we going to have enough? Are we going to have enough? Come on. Don't do this to me. Last one. Oh, no. 300 away. Do you think it's called the Chicago or the Chikage? Chike. I don't know. I know I'm 1,000% mispronouncing it, because that's my life. <laughs> I mispronounce everything. There we go. 50k blood echoes down the drain. All for the glory of this. Where is it? I'm excited about this. I'm excited about it. Oh. Oh, I look amazing. Oh, God. It ha yes. Yes. We finally have one of those uh, scabbards. Oh, God. It looks so good. The actual blade itself looks really nice. Oh man. Alright, oh, gotta get that pistol though. I know I know where it is. Um so here's the move set. These are our ones. Very fast, very nice. Big fan of that. Okay, that's our ones. Then we have the uh R2s. Okay, so sort of a downward slash. Not happy about the downward bit, but it's fine. Okay, jump attack. Oh, I like that. I like that. All that roll. 
Roll's all right. It's just like an hour one. It's fine. Okay, so transform time. Oh! As you can see, my health is ticking down. Oh! I need two hands it. We have an L2. That's the L2. It's a frost. It gets the frost. I was wondering. It needs a frost. It doesn't have a frost. That's a bad thing. But it's got one. It actually has one. So the more, more blood tins you have, the more damage this does, basically. It's very good. R2. Oh, yes! Oh, that's so good. It drains you loads of health when you do that, though. Oh, my God. I, I love this weapon. And then it's just got the best fucking R1s. All right, before I die, I better take that off. Transformation attacks, though. Is there a transformation attack? There is. Okay, so you can get a little burst of damage out. Mmm. What do you think of this weapon, guys? What do you think? I'm a big, big fan of that. Oh, man, I like that a lot. What we need for this weapon... Is like some sort of reliable lifesteal or something along those lines. That's the way I want to go. Because it's just like, you know, if I can manage to pull off a reliable lifesteal, I'll be really, really, really happy. Because it's just like I can constantly transform, trans transform and attack with that. What do you think the best, best way to go about using this weapon is going to be? Right, so. See how much that. Ah, I didn't even upgrade it. I didn't even upgrade it. I completely forgot. All right, I'll have to do that when I'm back at the Hunter's Dream. I just got a little bit too excited, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. They're so loud. You're so loud. Get out of the way, please. Thank you. So, apparently, you need to jump down here, which I didn't know. And then you get this chest. As you can see, I've run past this so many times. There it is. The Evelyn. Let's go back. Let's get out of this horrible place. Go, 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 go. Go. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm probably going to do a video... Um, actually using this and showing my like my ways that I use this efficiently as you can see I wanted to do a little bit of use of the weapon there but unfortunately uh, I completely forgot to upgrade it so when we're back in Hunter's Dream I'll read the description of the the gun damn it, it requires 18 18 blood tinge to use I have 16 I've been leveling my blood tinge very recently uh, just been spam leveling it we're two levels away so I can't actually hold it I'm so sorry but that's there it is um, the Evelyn so special pistol used by Kanehurst Knights the Evelyn uses quicksilver bullets just as any workshop firearm but the Kanehurst variant relies more on blood tinge lovingly named after a woman and graced with an intricate design Evelyn's were adorned by the Kanehurst Knights. So this weapon is actually very strong. Let me look at the stats. Um, yeah, it's blood tinge, is pretty good, stats-wise. But the fact that it is a B scaling without any upgrades on uh, blood tinge, it, I think it becomes an S. So at the very least, what we can do, since I can't even upgrade the upgrade, use the pistol at the moment, like hold it, uh, I'll upgrade the weapon. Make sure I do that on camera. Uh, so we fortify it. We should have enough, we hope. We do. Alright, and then I can even put a chunk on it. There we go. Alright, so we've managed to get the plus 7. And you can compare the stats now real quick of this weapon and the rifle spear. As you can see, the rifle spear has less damage. Just straight up on each hit. Which is just wonderful for me. Because can you actually buff this weapon with fire let me know can you use bolt paper on this weapon i don't know all right uh so we need to do the blood gem fortification so we just go to the rifle spear we take all of these off and then we go to this all right so we want to find a way to to get some sort of well quite simply we want to find a way to get some sort of regen off it and if there's a blood tinge scaling as well, because we're going to get tons of levels of blood tinge, we probably want to get this warm blood gem on as well. All right, cool. Um, do let me know your thoughts on this weapon and what you think the best thing I should do. Like, what would you do in this situation? Skill scaling as well is a good idea, I suppose. For now, I'm just going to get the physical attack up as near and as much as possible. So when you near death, you get more damage. I'm probably going to have low health a lot, so that's a good thing for me. Uh, and then we want probably the other, this one, yeah, physical attack up by 2.7%. 
boost rally potential. That that's important. The rally potential is like how much health you get back when you hit someone after you've taken damage. And obviously, in a thing where I'm taking a lot of damage, I want to get the health back. Maybe it's a good idea, but it's only 2.7% um, physical damage up compared to 7%. So I'd rather have 7%. You see what I mean? Um, never going to get the full health variant there, but I may as well put it on just in case. And uh, finally, for this slot, we'll put the warm blood gem on for more blood tinge scaling. Uh, I suppose. Actually, we could just do this for now. Yeah, for now, while I'm not, I've not really got the things I need. I need more blood tinge. Uh, maybe I don't need the scaling right now. I won't do that much. So we'll we'll get that um, slight rally potential there. So now it's all blood gemmed up, fully upgraded to plus seven. We'll get it to plus ten at some point in the uh, my current playthrough. And I'm sure, one thousand percent, I'm gonna make a video just showing off the weapon, me using it. Maybe I'll have a, like a topic that I want to discuss while I play through a certain area of the game, and then. After that, we'll have a video of me doing the final ending and refusing the offer and getting the alternate endings, which I am very, very excited about. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Again, very sorry I didn't get to use the pistol, but uh, in the next video, I will do a full showcasing of this weapon and the ways that I use it. If you have any advice for me on the build, on the way to play, the way to use the weapon, like what's good, what's bad, etc., go ahead and let me know in the comments. Much appreciated. Thank you for all the support. Have a great day. I've been Holler, you've been you, and I will see you next time in Bloodborne.